Today I'm making flower paint. And flower paint is the traditional barn paint or exterior building paint of Sweden. Sometimes it's called Swedish paint. And this paint is the reason that barns are red because they use rust as a moss or a microorganism growth inhibitor. And so that rust color comes out as red when it's made into paint. But it's made out of a lot of uh, natural ingredients that are non-toxic and low VOC. Um, and so this is a uh, French-derived uh, recipe, at least, uh, that I'm seeing revived online today. It's from a, a French guy, and I'll link to that in the description of the video. Uh, but today, I'm going to mix it all up, cook it up, and then apply it to a shed I have in the backyard. So, uh, first you need a large pot. This recipe makes 10 liters uh, so that is about two and a half, almost three gallons. So you need a pretty big receptacle. And then you need water. Uh, we'll be using eight uh, liters of water, which is about eight and a half quarts. Uh, we need 950, almost, a, or sorry, 650 grams of white flour. Uh, that's about 23 ounces. Again, all of these will be put in the description so you don't have to scramble to write them down right now. And then we're going to have about two and a half kilos, or about five and a half pounds of pigment. I'm using uh, iron oxide, Fe203, uh, which is basically rust. I've got some rust I made myself here, but getting five and a half pounds of rust was kind of out of the question. This is from a local auto place. I got some rusted out parts and ground them up. Uh, then you need about 250 grams of iron sulfate. Iron sulfate is a binding agent um, and uh, naturally occurring. It's iron bound with sulfur. Um, I need 100 milliliters of colorless um, dish soap and a quart, or I guess a, a liter, of uh, boiled linseed oil. So all of these, uh, with the exception of the boiled linseed oil, you could technically have uh, in food. Straight linseed oil is food safe. Boiled linseed oil often has a small amount of turpentine added to it, so do not use that in food applications. All of these together will create the paint, and we're going to go through that process right now. The first thing is boiling up seven out of the eight liters of water. I'm in my kitchen, I boil down water in something I use for making maple syrup. After I am done with this paint application, I can clean it out and continue to use it for food because it's non-toxic things going into this. So there's six liters, and I'll add one more liter, and I'll bring this up to a boil as I get everything else together. Okay, and now I'm going to mix up all the flour with one liter of water. So I'll turn this on. This is a digital scale. Switch it over to grams. Put here, this on. Add my liter of water, and then I'm going to tear that or zero it out. And now I need to add 23 uh, ounces or 650 grams of flour. 650 grams. Turn that off, and now I will grab my mixer because it's just flour and water, I can totally use food safe equipment. Okay, that pasty goop is now ready to be added to the water once it comes to a boil. Now that the water is boiling, we're going to add the flour mixture to it and stir at the same time. Kind of getting to be a thick, gloopy glop. Use a scraper to get the rest of this out of here. Okay, now I'm going to let this boil or simmer for about 15 minutes. So I'm going to set an alarm and let this cook. Hopefully, it'll take out some of these um, few clumps of flour that I have going on. And I'm going to stir occasionally so that I don't get any burned on the bottom. So now I need 250 grams 
of the ferrous sulfate heptahydrate, which is just ferrous sulfite for short. So I need 250 grams of this. So this five pound bag will make me quite a lot of gallons of paint. 250. And now I have my boiling flour and water mixture. And to that I'm going to add my 250 grams iron sulfate. Two and a half kilos or a bit over five pounds of iron oxide, which is this nice brick red color. First I'm going to add my homemade my homemade brick or my homemade iron or rust I guess really. So it's that reddish brown brick color. Iron of course is what gives bricks their red color as well. It's iron in the soil that oxidizes when the clay is fired. Now I'm going to add, okay, I'll add a bit at a time because this is a bit harder to control. Let's see. At this point, it's more maroon than deep red, as you can see. So the consistency right now, I like to go on the bottom, make sure I nothing sticking to the bottom and burning on the bottom. But it's starting, it's pretty thick and definitely sticks to the spoon. It's got a nice dark maroon color for the moment. We'll see how that changes over the next 15 minutes, if at all. All right, it's been 15 minutes again. And now we're going to add a liter of linseed oil. Now, obviously, I'm adding oil to water. So this is not, you know, usually a happy combination. So this gets cooked for another 15 minutes. To really break up and integrate that linseed oil into the mix. At this point it kind of feels like chocolate syrup, especially because of the color. All right, it's been another 15 minutes, so that's 45 total minutes cooking. 15 minutes with flour and water. 15 minutes when you add the iron sulfate and the iron oxide. And then 15 minutes when you add the linseed oil. And that adds up to 45 minutes total. Give it a good mix. Make sure there's nothing stuck on the bottom. And then I'm going to turn the heat off and let it cool down until it's cool enough to handle. And I'm going to clean up these tools before the paint dries because it's paint. I don't want to have to try and clean paint off of kitchen implements, right? I'm going to get them clean right now. As I was going along to wash up my things I realized I didn't have my soap added. So 100 grams of soap needs to be added. So don't forget your soap. You'll remind yourself when you're cleaning up your things. <laughs> 